Unfortunately, there's still a lot of people that are worrying about that bad cholesterol and taking that too far. It's not to say there's no merit there whatsoever, but it's not the whole story. Right. So let's get into the physiology of LDL and why classically doctors believe that is the culprit when it comes to heart disease, atherosclerosis, and challenges like that. Yeah, so we really need to go back uh, a little bit in history to kind of reconstruct the story here about how we were led to believe that LDL cholesterol was the end all and be all when it comes to heart disease. Um, you know, early 1900s here in the United States, heart disease is essentially undescribed. It's a rare disease. Leading physicians of the time would go their entire careers without seeing cases of, of atherosclerotic heart disease, plaque buildup in the arteries that ultimately leads to reduced blood flow in the arteries on the heart. Uh, and that's, you know, one of the things that leads to heart attacks. So fast forward, early 1900s, heart disease incidence starts to rise. We get to 1950s, and now we have what's considered to be an epidemic of heart disease, dramatic increases in the incidence of heart disease. The president of the United States, Dwight Eisenhower, has a heart attack while in office, 1955, and this appropriately sets off the alarm bells. And the leading scientist of the time had two competing theories about what the primary driver of this increased heart disease was. One theory was that it was dietary cholesterol and saturated fat in the diet that was leading to a buildup of cholesterol in the bloodstream, which then became a buildup of cholesterol-based plaques in the arteries of the heart. The other theory of the time was that sugar in the diet was uh, causing heart disease. The way that that works is that high levels of sugar in the bloodstream is damaging to the blood vessel walls, causes damage to the lining of the blood vessel walls, and that was thought to be a contributor to heart disease. For various reasons, uh, most of them not scientific, the cholesterol theory won out. What was called the diet heart hypothesis became the prevailing theory about what was causing heart disease. And this then led us down a couple of pathways. One pathway was ultimately led to the U.S. Dietary Guidelines. 1980, uh, the first version of the U.S. Dietary Guidelines was released. And the basic premise of the U.S. Dietary Guidelines is that we need to minimize fat in the diet in general, saturated fat and cholesterol in particular. And that was going to help us with the problem of heart disease. The other thing that came out of this theory was development of medications to lower cholesterol levels. Statin medications became the most widely prescribed class of medications uh, starting in about the 1990s. So here we are 30, 40 years later, we've been under this prevailing theory that cholesterol, dietary cholesterol, dietary saturated fat is the primary driver of heart disease. We've lowered our consumption of saturated fat and cholesterol. We've increasingly used medications to lower our LDL cholesterol levels. And despite that, heart disease remains the number one killer in the United States. And in fact, the incidence of heart disease um, has worsened over the past 10 years. And when you zoom back out, uh, you know, we had a small decrease from about 1985 to about 2000, and then the rate has started to go up again. And most of that decrease in retrospect is probably attributed to decrease in smoking rates. We now know smoking is a major contributor to the development of heart disease as well as these dietary factors. Uh, but ultimately, you know, the cholesterol hypothesis, the diet heart, heart hypothesis is not leaning to a meaningful reduction in the incidence of heart disease. And that's why I believe we need to step back and question whether it was the right hypothesis in the first place. And when I say that it may not be the right hypothesis, cholesterol clearly plays a role in the development of heart disease. When you look at these plaques, you do see cholesterol there. Um, it's just not clear that cholesterol is driving the process. In fact, 
you know, and the alternative theory going back to the sugar theory is that the blood vessel wall gets damaged by something, sugar being one of those things that can damage the blood vessel. Cholesterol is a repair mechanism that the body uses, and certain types of cholesterol particles are particularly uh, prone to forming these plaques and to then building up and ultimately causing blockages. Uh, so there's a lot of nuance there. There's a lot to unpack. Most doctors don't understand this well, but we've gotten to a point today where basically the theory is, the thought is, that if you just keep your cholesterol level low, you're going to avoid heart disease. And the unfortunate that, thing that I see as a heart surgeon is lots of people with low cholesterol levels end up on my operating table. So what I'm hearing you say, the likely cause, well, not likely cause, the cause of the damage is things like smoking and sugar. And then the cholesterol is likely there as a band-aid or a scab. And because of association, not causation, it's been given the blame for what's causing the problems further down. Exactly. And, you know, the analogy that I use uh, to explain this to people is, you know, if you punch a hole in, the, in your wall and then you get the spackle out and you, you know, patch that hole. If you keep punching holes in your wall and you keep putting more and more spackle, eventually that spackle is now like sticking out of the wall. And that's basically what's happening. And you can say, OK, well, if I just don't have any spackle around, I'm not going to end up with, you know, uh, the, uh, the, the spackle sticking out of my wall. But most of us in that situation would say, stop punching holes in your walls. And that's what we really need to look at. We need to look at the factors that are causing damage to the blood vessels in the first place and reverse those factors. And that's where we circle back to metabolic health insulin resistance. Insulin resistance creates the environment that allows our blood vessel walls to get damaged. And if we address the insulin resistance, that is how we can have a more effective uh, prevention strategy when it comes to heart disease. If you enjoyed that clip, press here for the full episode. I'll see you over there. The first uh, 10 plus years as a heart surgeon, I was increasingly unhealthy. I was morbidly obese. I was pre-diabetic. And I realized that I was destined for my own operation.